Well, I was out of town the other day and I stopped by a thrift store and I found another Sony VCR. Uh, let's see, what is the model on this one? This one is an SLV 688 HF for hi-fi. 25 bucks, it says works on it. Um, yeah, how can it work? Look at that. And down below it, I have a Kenwood KR4070 that I picked up as well. So yeah, let's uh, let try to take this thing out and blow it off before I do much more to this unit. And uh, I'll show you the Kenwood that I picked up for 50 bucks, KR4070. I did go ahead and replace the meter lamp in it. Other than that, it works perfectly fine. Let's shut off some lights here and you can actually see. Yep. Well, the meter, the display lamp was out, but I did do a slight IF tuning alignment because it would not receive in stereo, but now it's working perfectly. So I may need to go ahead and order some replacement lamps because the dial light was working and it went off and just came back on as you saw. But anyhow, um, it says 60 over here. I paid 50 for it. So yeah, working perfectly. Vintage Kenwood audio equipment, 40 watts per channel RMS. I do believe on this unit and uh, yeah, very, very nice vintage unit for 50 bucks. You can't lose for 50 bucks. Okay. I'm going to get the Kenwood off the bench and get the blower to the VCR and see if it looks tiny, tiny bit better when I'm done. One moment. All right, well, that's certainly just a little tiny bit better than it was. Uh, let's go ahead and power this unit on and I'll get the capture device ready. And I don't see anything. Oh, duh. Helps if you actually turn the power on to the unit. Just a little life hack right there. Okay, there it is, power on. Capture device running in three, two, one, capture. And it shows it is recording. Uh, let's go ahead and just grab a tape that doesn't have much copyright content on it. And we'll just go ahead and pop it in and see what it wants to do. Okay, well, as you can see, it is actually playing a tape back. And it doesn't look too terribly bad for a VHS tape. So 
So I think this is a SLP tape or a six hour tape. The maximum width on the video tracks on an SLP tape is 19 microns. Not too terribly much, but it did an adequate job. It definitely could have been a lot better. Let's go ahead and eject that. And we'll get an SP tape. Now this is a commercially produced tape, so hopefully it does not trigger some kind of a copyright warning or strike. Okay, there is a factory VHS tape and SP playing, and the video actually looks quite good. For VHS, that is. So what okay, I want to do is I want to make sure that the infrared emitter and detector are working. Obviously, it needs a little bit of lube as it unloads. It's very jittery as it comes back. So I just want to try to find a tape that's near the end, which obviously I can't do. All right, this one is near the beginning. I may try to autoplay, I'm not sure. Nope, so let's go ahead and hit rewind. And it is struggling, it stopped. So I think it's got a slipping belt, just based on what I'm seeing here. You'd see that it's two stories high and packed with parts from floor And to it does actually play, that's great. You need a part, but when I go to rewind it, it's kind of hard to see through the the glare down here it doesn't actually move and I get a uh, error code on the screen up here 41105 I'm sure that means something that probably did not see a real rotation sensor so I think the mechanism is going to have to come off and I'm betting the belt from the capstan motor back here so the real drive unit over here is probably slipping. So let me stop the capture device, stop, and I'll pause the camera and we'll get back to this probably at a later date because I'm out of time tonight. All right, I'm not sure where we left off. It was really late, like 5 a.m. in the morning. I needed to go to bed, so I need to try to get the mechanism out of this unit uh, to get to the bottom of it. I know we have a slipping belt. I hope we have a slipping belt and nothing more. So I'm just gonna start unplugging stuff. And it does look like it does unplug from that side. Oh, I'm sure it unplugs, come on. Maybe. No, it's definitely a plug. Oh, there we go. Uh, auto head cleaner. Uh, this one's in actually mint condition for its age. It does not have any springiness, but just to be safe, I'm just going to go ahead and pull it off. They they really don't do much to begin with, so I'm going to try to do it without having to pull the front, but I may have to pull the front after all. little cover to keep stuff falling off the fuse back there. Hey, check it out. A clean spot on the board. And uh, let's go ahead and just pop this guy off. Hopefully you can see everything that I'm doing there. And we'll just go ahead and stage these in the egg carton. Yeah, I'm probably going to, have to pull this off. I know you can't see what I'm doing. Let me zoom out just a tiny bit here. And uh, hopefully nothing falls out. I'm going to have to flip this upside down or partially upside down to. Well, 
Wow, release these tabs today. And okay, there's one. And there's like no way to get under them. There we go. And more connectors. Okay, front is completely released. Now, as I recall, there weren't screws under the main board, at least I hope there were not screws under the main board that held this thing down. Oh, don't forget that. That would have been a bad move. Gotta make sure you unplug the, uh, that's actually the uh, rotary transformer for the video and audio hi-fi heads. You wanna make sure that gets unplugged. And I'm gonna say we're good. There's the mode select switch. We're here, might service it, I'm not sure. Backup battery right there, might be good, might not, I don't know. Uh, let me get this off of the bench and get that guy onto the bench. And we'll flip this guy over. Get you a possibly better view. I'm going to try to hold this and turn. Oh, yeah, look at that. I can actually spin the flywheel, and it, it just keeps going. Uh, belt doesn't look too bad. I'm going to try to just clean it first. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure that's going to be the problem. It's just slipping like crazy. I may have a new old stock. I'd have to look and find out. But let's just go ahead and try to clean the pulleys uh, with some acetone and a cotton swab. The YouTube comment generator, and then when we use the cotton swab to clean the video heads, that's the true YouTube comment generator. Um, got some fuzz down there. I should I should blow off the bottom of this, but it looks pretty good. I mean, looks good. Okay, let's get some acetone and a uh, paper towel, and we'll clean this belt up and see how it feels. One moment. I'm not quite sure what I use this for last. And. Uh, Cat has found the paper towels, as usual. Right, let's just clean this guy out. Oh, look at that, it is an actual anchor hawking. Love these little glass bowls. Virtually indestructible. Only thing that really destructs them is a sudden speed change from free falling to the floor. Okay, fresh acetone going in. Could just wet the paper towel with it. Oh, I need to, need to fix that, but I don't have time. I have it in manual focus, so hopefully you can see this. But I'm just going to pull the belt through the paper towel just a few times. Now, people have suggested um, boiling the belt. I haven't tried that. Look at all the crap coming off of that thing. If I can get a good contact with this belt without boiling it, I think we'll be good because I'm actually removing a lot of the contaminants off of the belt. Wow, a lot. Let the rubber breathe. May actually come back to life. Oh, it's starting to feel better. Starting to feel a little bit of drag on it now. I should shut up and just speed this up. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Look at the progression from when we started. And uh, yeah, it was it was coming off. I, I think there might be a little bit of nicotine on that belt, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, back here at the end, uh, barely pulled anything off of the belt at all. Okay, pretty happy with those results. Let's go uh, refill this guy.
and we'll get the mechanism back into view here. Get some cotton swabs. These are the actual Q branded cotton swabs, not the generic knockoffs. And this will take the numbers off the mortar if uh, you're not careful. And I'm probably not going to be careful. I don't like to double dip, so it contaminates the acetone for the next user, which is me. Well, look at the difference. That's pretty good already. So I'm probably going to sacrifice... Yep, dryer's done. Got laundry to do now. Sacrifice a couple of cotton swabs here to clean the pulleys. This one might take three cotton swabs, I'm not sure. Not bad, we'll do one more pass. Okay, I'm liking that. Like the McDonald's thing, I'm liking it. I'll keep those in a airtight container, especially with the, uh, with the Elgatos running around the house. And, oh. Look at that. I like that much better. I can't free spin this anymore. And you can actually, well, you could hear it. A couple of the gatos are having a discussion out there. Um, let's do the mode select switch. We're here. Why not, right? Got it this far apart. And let me try to get you zoomed in a little bit better. Oh, I think this is one of those uh, push pin type mode select switches, if I'm not mistaken. Turn off the auto magical exposure and we'll lock it in to manual exposure and then manual focus. Yeah, make sure that uh, this post lines up roughly with that dot right there. As you can see, it's off just a hair. Oh no, this feels like a regular mode select switch. Oh, you know what? I, I thought I was wrong once, but I was mistaken. It's this little indent right there. Let me get my uh, walkie-talkie flashlight here, my little Motorola. That needs to line up. See how it's got the, uh, uh, the half moon right there, the uh, half circle, semicircle? That should be the home position, uh, not that dot and that. Yeah, don't put it together that way. Put it, do as I say, not as I do. Okay, let's see if this is going to uh, cooperate. Fingernails engaged. And it did cooperate. Doesn't look too terribly bad. Inside, a little worse. Quite as good as I expected. Uh, another cotton swab. Let's do the acetone test. Can we use acetone on this? Yes or no? So I'm just going to dip. I don't want to. I don't want to soak it. I just want it moist. And then I'm just going to wipe out here. And I'm going to say no. We will not pass the acetone test because it turned black. So that is not good. So we're going to have to get some uh, denatured alcohol, otherwise known as vodka in other parts of the world. And uh, we'll clean it with that. One moment. Okay, another bowl with some, uh, I'm not sure what it was, denatured isopropyl, just whatever the wife had on the bathroom counter. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and try to wipe it with the dry end. 
and then we'll wipe it with the alcohol end. Oh good, it is recording. <laughs> I saw the white dot up there, which means not recording. Then I saw, you can't see it, but on the on-screen display, there's a little red dot that tells me that it is actually recording. And we have a visitor at my feet. And I'm probably gonna go ahead and clean off the, uh, yeah, look at that, how dusty. But doggone it, you can't see what I'm talking about. There's the infrared emitter over there. Um, I got squirreled, so here's the uh, infrared receiver for the supply sensor, S-Sense, right there. That's what detects when the tape is at the beginning or the end, actually the end, and this is the T-Sense, the take-up sense. We'll go ahead and clean those up as well. Um, okay, good with that. Stain the toothbrush. Um, here is my less abused stainless toothbrush. Uh, make sure power is off when you're doing this, although it probably wouldn't hurt anything if the power was on. It might cause it to try to run the loading motor, but because the loading motor is physically disconnected at this moment, it ain't going to run. It's not one of those Bluetooth motors. Wireless. Make sure especially, these are the most important ones to get are the ones around the edges. Uh, they're the ones that tell it where it is and where it needs to stop at. I don't like a mirror finish. You've probably heard me say that 1,653,275 times. I do like it to be uh, a little abrasive. It, it will self-clearance over time. I like it to be abrasive because it does actually scuff up the contacts as it moves around and uh, basically self-cleans it. So on this side, hopefully you can see that. It is out of focus because I have it in the manual focus. I'm just going to drag that straight across just like that and we'll get another swab. Cleaning in one direction only, like that. Same thing down here. Alcohol-laden swab. And then I do want to dry it off to remove any contaminants. And I don't remember if I dried this part or not. Okay, I'm very happy with the results of that. I do have the exposure on Manuel, so uh, it might be washed out very, very slightly, but you can kind of see the abrasiveness right there. And that is the look I was going for. Uh, just gotta find my dielectric grease. I used it the other day and I don't remember where I used it and where I might have left it. Now this is a different tube, but it's the same stuff. Huh. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I've actually got two of these. They're both exactly the same. They're both, uh, whoa, 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 way, way too close. They're both Dow Corning 111 Valve Lubricant and Sealant. It is silicone dielectric grease. I've been using this stuff for years. I lost this tube. I had to order this tube. And you can see how much of it I've used. When I got this, it was brand new. Um, I do, um, I do a bunch of service off camera. I only service things on camera here and there. So I'm going to grab a new cotton swab. Yeah, it's going to leave a couple little hairs, but I really don't care. They will self clearance. Do some dabs, not do dabs, do some dabs, just. And then I just want to kind of smear it around, bring it around town. And what, what does SpongeBob say? You have to uh, do a double take three times. Okay, try to clean up all that. 
I'm going to hit it just with a hair more. I'm not happy with the amount. Just make sure when you do this that every, every metal surface is actually covered on the mode select switch. I should have you zoom back in for this so you can actually count the number of hairs I left behind. Too much. Okay, good enough. And I am going to dab. Hopefully it's in view. Just a tad on the wiping ends. Snap it back together. And then just run it around town a bunch of times. Oh yeah, remember SpongeBob, stop on your right foot. That's what it was. Do a double take three times. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Reset that back where it needs to be. Um, yeah, let's move the Russian alcohol out of the way here. And let me clean up my workbench. I accidentally spilled my Q branded cotton swabs. One moment. Okay, and I did get you a front row seat here for the uh, supply sensor cleaning. It kind of looks like it might need it. Let's get the uh, walkie talkie flashlight out. Oh, yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, 15 years ago. So what I did is I squirted a little bit of glass cleaner on my workbench, which is a, uh, oh, I forget what the name of this stuff is. GE made it, it's white, you can see it in the background. I think it was a GE branded. Can't remember what it was now. Squirreled going on. And a little bit ran down beside there. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but much, much cleaner. Um, I did test it off camera before I started the video, and it did not stop at the end of the tape, but look at, look at the difference. So let's bring this around to there. This is the infrared emitter in the center. We'll wipe that guy off. And then uh, hopefully I can get this into view. And we'll get the walkie-talkie flashlight out one more time. Uh, that one doesn't look too bad. Still going to clean it just because. Another customer that wants a good used VCR. And I, I can't in good faith just hand him a VCR just because it does play a tape. I want to make sure that it's going to continue playing a tape. Okay, where are we? I need a road map. Nope, we're not there. We need to go this way and then right there. Ooh, bad focus. Let's try to move this a little bit closer. There we go. So this is one of the two rear rotation sensors. And uh, let me see if I can pump up the exposure ever so slightly. That's as far as I can go. So if you look really close on this side, you'll see it, it's kind of got a red cast and it's got a little tiny tip right there sticking out. That's the lens. This side is uh, clear basically with the same little tiny tip. So I'm just going to wedge a cotton swab in there and hopefully it'll make contact with the tips. Not, not a David Allen Co. tip reference but you know what I mean and we'll clean that there's another one uh, right there and we want to do the same thing with that so one side is supply real rotation and the other side is the take up real rotation it did seem to be working fine but all it takes is that one little piece of dust to get in there and jam up the works if you know what i mean okay auto exposure going off and it will zoom back out i'm considering assembling this thing in real time 
walkie talkie going away. We'll zoom in just a tad. Um, you know what? Before I do that, let's go ahead and we'll get the mechanism back up here. And I just want to take a look at that right there, which is what conveys the uh, infrared beam back down to what would that be? That's going to be the supply side because it's going to be switched around. So I just want to clean the tip of that. And then over here is the take up side. And then this is going to be the, uh, the center, which is the emitter. Okay, now I think we can go ahead and reassemble it. I'm very happy with the amount of traction. You can hear it. And it does spring back. It doesn't just uh, free run. Okay, we'll move this guy out of the way. And we'll bring that guy back into view. And the only thing that has to line up on this is that has to line up with that peg on the mode select switch. So make sure you have that in line. And oh, there is a three pin plug right there that does drive the loading motor right there. So I don't know why they well, it stood that crystal up a little bit, but I guess it's going to be okay. Um, sometimes you might want to spray a little bit of contact cleaner into this record proof switch record prf record proof may or may not be able to see it i'm just going to work it a bunch of times that's the uh, tab on the back of a vhs right there so if you have the tab knocked out like that one is it will not allow you to record on the tape as a safety precaution okay i think we're good just kind of gently lower this guy back into place. I'm very happy with that. And we'll put some screws in it and uh, we'll give it a try and then I'll do a cleaning, which is YouTube Comment Generator version 2.0. Cotton swabs and video heads do not mix. Was that's what I've been told. Do I put this back on the fuse? Yeah, I guess I should. Otherwise, it's not going to be UL compliant. Can you guys even see what I'm doing? Oh, yeah, good. Okay. Don't forget your ground wire. If you do happen to forget that ground wire, I can tell you from experience, not on the Sony's, but on Panasonic's that have the little switch mode power supply block in the back, back here, you'll get a rainbow effect in the picture. And I do en enjoy that they made this so the uh, head leads kind of tuck up and out of the way. Audio control erase head at least that is. Um, okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and uh, what's going on with that display? It looks, why is it canted way down? Well, there's there's a horizontal plane and this thing is, wow, what? Well, there's nothing I can do about that, I guess. Other than take this, what is this stupid bracket on here so you can hinge it away? How, is it supposed to go up un, underneath? I, I've never come across this before. I would think the display would be vertical like that but when I let go it points down but 
it seems to work. I didn't really notice any kind of a problem. Clean off that. So I guess maybe when you put the front on it, it pushes it back. I don't know. Okay, let's... Uh, ooh, look at that. It's got a slow closed door. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, I like it. Obviously, uh, oh, that's just an emitter to tell you that the light is on. Okay. So when you put this thing back together, see this little tab right here? Um, it needs to go under this tab on the VHS door. So I'm going to lift the door up. And then try to with it lifted up. There we go. Snap it back together. Don't forget to plug in your plugs. I can do it without getting my head in the way. Kind of operating in braille right there. Just trying the buttons. Do I hear a click? I do. Okay, so I believe all the switches are working. We have the full erase head configured, plugged in. We did not plug in the video heads. That would have been an epic failure. Okay, video heads plugged in. Audio control erase head plugged in right there. Uh, mechanism bolted down. Auto head cleaner delete. Check. Uh, let's get these speaker wires out of the way. I was testing a receiver. They don't need to be there. Okay, um, video capture device. Where did you go? There it is. Uh, line out. Whoopsie doodles. Okay. <clears throat> well, let me find a tape. We'll put it in here and see if it actually works. One moment. Okay, capture device is connected. And let's power this thing on. Cylinder spins up. That's a very good sign. It's pretty quiet. Power has been applied. I do see a blue screen. Let me go ahead and start the capture device in three, two, one, capture. And it shows it is recording. And let's pop a tape into it, see what it wants to do. And it is playing. I do see video on the screen. Auto tracking should be happening very soon. In a package this size, you have the potential for a pretty devastating event, and that's why the art of and that looks good. has become a standard tool for many large American police forces. So remember, last time I couldn't rewind the tape all the way to the beginning. What tape was that? Was it this tape? Is located in. It might have been that tape. So let's stop it. Eject it. I haven't cleaned it yet, and I do want to add some lube to those loading tracks. Make sure it plays. The place of a huge warehouse, Franklin Auto Parts. You need it, we've got it. And yes, it does actually play. A little bit of crinkles in the tape right there. Look at that, a vintage Simpsons commercial from probably. Well, it says Fox 30. We went to Fox 20. God, that's been 20 plus years ago. So yeah, it's been a couple of days ago. So I obviously taped this at home years and years ago. Looks pretty good for an SLP tape. Yeah, Cops, Mad TV, really, Most Wanted. Oh yeah, I used to tape Cops. Look at that. <laughs> America's Most Wanted. Okay, let's see if it'll rewind. Enough of that. I could sit and watch this all day long. So it would not rewind previously. Oh, look at that. It's done. 
That's freaking awesome. It works great. Let's go ahead and uh, give it a good fast forward. You may not be able to see it. You just barely see the tape taken up on the reel right there. I wonder if I can uh, manipulate. No, that made it worse. So we'll go back to rewind. Okay, rewind. And what is going on? Okay, there it goes. Operator error on my end, possibly. So watch for the leader to come out right there when you see a little white tab come out. And there it is. It's a clear leader. And it's pulling it back in. And it's happy. I don't know why it... This tape might have contamination in the beginning. I've used it 16... Billion three hundred and seventy five million times, so it's an old tape. Okay, let's go ahead and fire up the YouTube comment generator. Cotton swabs, acetone, and video heads. You know that's gonna trigger somebody. Okay, so I got my camera kind of canted off at a weird angle right here. So you can actually see uh, the upper cylinder right there. So, I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. These little cutouts right there, that is where the video heads live. Uh, so, that's the hi-fi head right there. And you can tell that because it only has one set screw. Now, these are the video heads. Notice the two set screws right there. So, there's actually two video heads. And you can just barely kind of see. Now, let me see if I can get macro zoom enabled one moment. Okay, there is macro zoom enabled, and I just set my clean cotton swab down in something. And now it is contaminated, so I won't be using that one. I'll grab another clean cotton swab. Some more acetone. So there are two of the video heads. You can actually see the individual coils that are wound around the ferrite core. And we'll move it over to the hi-fi head. And then two more video heads and then the other hi-fi head right there. So let's go ahead and just, probably gonna be in the way a lot of this. I'm just gonna wipe the heads very, very gently. Maybe, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. Wiping in a horizontal motion only. I've only been doing this since about 1984. So only 40 years. I've probably destroyed three video heads in that time frame. And that's how much crud has come off so far. Nope, no damage there. No damage there. No damage there and no damage there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull back, or we can kind of see the whole head. And we'll move this over just a tad. So next I just wanna go ahead and clean the upper cylinder. Not, I'm not going down to the head area, I've already cleaned that area. Incidentally, if you're wondering what those little tiny grooves are that are etched into the head, those allow the tape to float on air. They capture air as it spins, and so the tape actually doesn't touch the top of the cylinder as it rotates. Only cleaning the top, not going down to the heads. Once again,
and look at how much stuff came off there. I haven't cleaned the lower cylinder yet. I'll do that next. And so when I'm doing the lower cylinder, I try to keep the heads spaced away. You can see one of the heads right there and the other head here. And I'm kind of cleaning in between all those. I know you can't see it in the back side. But that's the crud that came off of the lower cylinder. Okay. I think that's as good as it's going to get as far as the video heads go. I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick wipe off on the video path, which I'll probably go ahead and speed up because you've seen it 100,000, 200,000 times. I don't know. Realistically, 20 or 30. Okay, so I think the next thing is just to add a little bit of lube to the loading tracks right here. You can see the grease is virtually gone. So let me go ahead and grab some white lithium grease that I thought I had on the bench, but I must have used it for something else. One moment. Okay, so I went ahead and put a little bit of white lithium grease into one of the clean bowls. Uh, this is just, I'm not sure where I got this. I think I got it at Walmart like 20 years ago. Unified white lithium grease. Multi-purpose. Automotive, marine, and household use. What, what is this? All metal to metal applications. Prevent rust will not wash out. Stain proof, waterproof, high melting point. Extends lubrication periods. Okay. And uh, there's the barcode if anybody wants to scan that and find it if it's actually still made i'm not sure but i just like to get a little bit on my swab that's kind of a lot of it but that's okay and then what i try to do is go up underneath and scrape some off underneath now make sure you don't touch any of the important parts But you don't want to get this on any of the heads or the surface that touches the tape. So this will help it slide much, much better. And like I said, I'm trying to scrape some of it up underneath. I should have done this when it was upside down. Yeah, that probably wouldn't have been a good idea. But this will help it move much, much better. Uh, can we get the pinch roller assembly out by releasing this tab and lifting straight up? Yes, we can. So I just want to add some lube over here in the what they call the Christmas tree or what we call the Christmas tree. That's what moves the pinch roller up and down. Try to put some on the shaft itself. Mitsubishi's had a big problem with these. It is back into place. Wipe that off like nobody saw it. That moves freely. That was a problem in early Sony VCRs. This uh, take up arm would gum up and it would actually break a little gear down here. Okay, let's go ahead and insert a tape. Hopefully everything's good. I 
And now that it's plain or semi plain play. And there it is plain. I'm going to add a little bit of more grease, a little bit of more, a little bit more on that side. So when it unloads, it will push the grease back. So we'll stop it and eject it. Hopefully these go back smoothly now. Well, better. Try it one more time. Play, eject, yeah, it's still a little bit bumpy, but I think it's going to be what it is. Well, I am pretty happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. It's taken up, everything's good. It's actually playing. Video quality looks pretty doggone good. Uh, let me get the capture device started. Three, two, one, capture. And it shows it is recording, so hopefully it does actually record. If you could see through the back wall. So, yeah, that's it. So this is the uh, Sony SLV688HF, picked up for 25 bucks. At a local thrift store, nice little unit. These have been pretty doggone reliable. Rarely do we have issues with one of these units as far as uh, like broken parts, mode select switch issues. I went ahead and serviced it anyhow. Get all this stuff out of here, make it look a little bit presentable. And uh, yeah, I like it. Another one saved from the recycle bin. And, uh, yep, this might have been a little bit of a long video because I did a bunch of stuff that was uh, live, unscripted. Well, I really script my videos anyhow, but uh, not severely edited down. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern, especially uh, about the YouTube comment generator, the uh, cotton swabs, and cleaning the video heads. As you can see, it is absolutely perfect. Once again, leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond when I have time. While you're down there, if you could, please hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Once again, as of right now, I'm trying to get caught up. Haven't been feeling good. Working as much as I possibly can. But, yeah, trying, trying to get this stuff done as time and health issues allow. Everyone, thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really, really appreciate it. Look at that, a Netflix commercial. Holy crap, how old is this tape? All right, I'll leave you with a couple commercials and we'll call it a day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. I miss you. I miss us. Love you. It's true. Taco Bell's big, tasty grilled stuffed burrito with double the beef, three cheeses, and grilled to go. I mean, seriously. To get unbelievable taste for an unbelievable price, think outside the bun. In a place founded on tradition. What are they doing? They're stomping the yard. Where are you from? One outsider. I made it talk to you about Theta New Theta. They're kidding, right? We'll show everyone. All step. A battle. Been missing. We're gonna need you to teach all of us in your movies. Seven years. We own this and we own you. He's the seven time national step champ. Somebody's gonna have to bring him down a notch. Stop the yard. Rated PG 13. Opens everywhere Friday. Preston, sit up straight. <laughs> Preston Weatherby? Rich Eisen! You're going to the Super Bowl with an NFL player. Yes! And you can take your mom and dad. Log on to NFLRush.com. Enter to win big today. Can I take someone else? He's the dog.
doctor you'd never want treating you unless your life depends on it. His brain is trying to kill his heart. Hugh Laurie is turning in one of the great star performances of our time. I told you never to call me when I'm on trial. All new house after an encore episode, Fox Tuesday. Viewer discretion advised. Getting dispatched to a uh, assault call. And he's calling in. She was just uh, assaulted by two Hispanic males. Uh, All right, that's it. Welcome to Wichita. Everyone have a great day. Bye bye. Okay, here we go. Recording the blowing out of the VCR. Check, check, check. One, two, three. What's that? What? Well, because I'm recording with my cell phone, so I have to get an audio sync to match to match the audio for my wireless mic to the cell phone. Love you, Love you baby. Oh, I don't need your guff. <laughs>